Hey, I'm Dr. Morales. I'm a board certified cardiologist as well as electrophysiologist and I have treated thousands of patients with atrial fibrillation. In this video, I'm going to discuss, can atrial fibrillation just go away? Is there a chance, if you've got an episode of atrial fibrillation, does that mean that you have the chronic long-term condition as well? Will it continue to come back over time? Is it just a, a one-off thing that can just kind of go away on its own without any other repercussions or is it chronic things? So that's what I want to talk about in this video. So let's get, get into it. If you like this video, if you want to see more videos about atrial fibrillation, check out my channel, Dr. AFib, and hit that subscribe button underneath this video so you can get more notifications when my, my new videos come out. So in this video, let's talk about atrial fibrillation and whether it can one off, whether it can go away on its own, or whether it can continue to progress on its time. In general, um, HF, I usually tell my patients atrial fibrillation, in, unless for a few exceptions that I'm going to get to that, is usually a condition that will continue to progress if nothing is done. Okay, and that's what I'm going to get to all of that about how you can prevent that progression as well as the exceptions where maybe it is just a one-off thing. Okay, first let's talk about these exceptions. You know, whether it could, it, is there ever a time when AFib is just a one-off thing and you maybe you don't, you'll never get it again for the rest of your life? Yeah, it's certainly possible, but it's kind of a rare circumstance. Uh, you have to have something that was a truly uh, reversible event. Uh, that can, ca can that cause the atrial fibrillation and maybe if you prevent that again, maybe you never get it again. Uh, what are some examples, okay? So let's say, for example, sometimes people get atrial fibrillation from severe electrolyte abnormalities, such as the potassium is very low. That can sometimes happen when people have very severe uh, gastrointestinal disease. Let's say you get a horrible uh, GI bug and you get horrible diarrhea where you get very dehydrated and then your potassium levels become very low. Yeah, that can set off atrial fibrillation and then once you get better, you collect your, you reset your height, you, you re become hydrated again, you correct your potassium or your electrolyte sufficiency, AFib goes away. If you never get really severe uh, episode like that again, maybe you'll never get atrial fibrillation again. Uh, it can also happen in other uh, severe illnesses uh, such as getting a severe pneumonia, uh, um, or some other severe illness, there's a possibility that you may not ever get AFib again once you've recovered from the illness, but it is possible. Um, also, another thing we to mention these days is also COVID illness. There's also plenty of people who get COVID who get um, uh, atrial fibrillation afterwards, and there's a possibility that over time the AFib will, will go away on its own as people continue to uh, recover from, uh, from having a COVID pneumonia. All a possibility, but it's kind of few and far between. It is some reversible event and it goes away and then you may not get AFib again. Certainly a possibility. Uh, other thing are medications. There are actually some medications that can cause atrial fibrillation. Um, most common ones would be certain cancer medications can certainly cause atrial fibrillation. There's a long list of different cancer medications which can cause um, end up causing atrial fibrillation and there's a possibility that removing or stopping that medication maybe will uh, the atrial fibrillation will not come back. There's also some psychiatric medications such as things for depression or bipolar which have also been linked to having atrial fibrillation as well and stopping that and potentially may, you may not get any more atrial fibrillation. Um, in addition there are other parts of your body such as thyroid problems. Um, people when they have particularly hyperthyroidism, they can have something called uh, Graves disease or other types of hyperthyroidism where the, heart is, or the thyroid is overactive, creates a lot of, secretes a lot of hormones, makes their body overactive and can trigger episodes of AFib. And there's a possibility that once it becomes corrected that they, you won't have a, a, a fib anymore, okay? And so those are a few examples of what I would call reversible etiologies when there's some other underlying condition that caused you to have atrial fibrillation. If it's removed or you don't have it again, um, then you may not have atrial fibrillation anymore after that. But the most common risk factors for AFib, many people have. Um, that includes age over 60 to 70 years old. As people get older and older, they develop more fibrosis or scar tissue in their heart. Um, kind of like similar when people get wrinkles in their face as they get older, same thing can happen in their heart and it causes episodes of AFib. Other common risk factors include high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, um, 
alcohol use, sleep apnea, all these common risk factors um, are things that most people have. I mean, most people who have AFib have some of these kinds of risk factors. Not everybody, there's certainly some exceptions to that rule as well, but most people will have some element of those risk factors. And so, if somebody who has these common risk factors for AFib starts getting episodes of AFib, it is unlikely to just go away and cease if nothing is done. Again, going back to what I commonly tell in my patients, if nothing is done, it's common that AFib will progress and progress. And AFib is a condition that likes to progress. It will, it will become worse and worse as the years go by if what's causing the AFib is not addressed and not el eliminated. And for many people, that is obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes. And there's many ways to combat this progression. There's many ways to stop AFib from getting worse and worse. So if you want that to not get worse and worse, there are many ways to do that. There's obviously medications are always an option, I tell patients. You know, there's, there's a variety of prescription medications that your doctors can prescribe that can help reduce the progression of AFib and improve symptoms of, of atrial fibrillation. They sometimes even make it so that you don't get any hardly any, any episodes. Medications are always an option. Procedures are always an option as well. There's procedures that I do and other electrophysiologists do called an ablation where I go in through your groin, take catheters that go up to your heart and make strategic burn marks inside your left upper chamber of your heart, which is where most AFib comes from. If you want to learn more about ablation procedures, I have a video on the, I have a link underneath this video for that, for that video as well. Where you can learn more about ablation procedures. That works better than any medication does to suppress or reduce that progression of, of atrial fibrillation. However, lifestyle modifications are also very, very important. That goes back to going down to the underlying root of what caused AFib and to begin with. And so for many people, that involves weight loss, that involves improving high blood pressure, improving diabetes, and that can be accomplished in a variety of methods. Um, when, what I commonly tell my patients is that it all starts with the food that you put in your mouth and keeping your food as natural as possible to try to eliminate processed foods, to reduce added salt, added added sugar, uh, keep your food as healthy as possible, uh, food as healthy as possible and as natural as possible is the healthiest way to eat. And there's a variety of diet types out there to help you accomplish that. But I also created my own program called the Take Control of Rafe Program. Well, I give you the step-by-step -step guide and everything natural um, that you can do to help improve AFib, to reduce inflammation, to lose weight, to help improve those underlying causes that contribute to atrial fibrillation. And that is an essential, essential part of any AFib treatment to reduce that progression so that it doesn't become a chronic thing. So yes, there are times when AFib is a one-off thing and it may just go away on its own, but you got to have the truly reversible cause that once you got to get rid of it, maybe the AFib will, will never come back and otherwise your heart is normal. But if you have any of those common risk factors that the grand majority of people with AFib have, if those are not addressed, AFib will continue to get worse one way, uh, over as the years go by. People get more frequent episodes, they get longer lasting, and then you reach a point where AFib is there all the time and it doesn't want to go away on its own. And the more years that go by, the harder and harder it is to actually reverse that process and make it so that you have little to no AFib. And that can certainly be accomplished by many ways, including medications, procedures, as well as lifestyle modifications, which is why I created the Take Control of AFib program to give you everything you need to know lifestyle-wise to improve and reverse atrial fibrillation. Right underneath this video, there's a link that goes to my program where you'll be able to learn more about what's included in the program, as well as see testimonials from people who have actually taken the program and see what they have to say. So check it out. Hope it help you to reverse your atrial fibrillation, and otherwise I wish you the best with your AFib.